Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here, and you know it's Monday. I can only mean one thing: horror news. Okay, well, this ain't really news per se, but uh, you know, I kind of rarely, I don't usually try to get hung up on short videos, because typically, and don't get me wrong, I always watch short videos to check them out. I guess you know, lend support, if you will. I mean, it's a long time video, regardless if it's a you know feature-length film or a short film. You know, if you're struggling starting off, it's always good to have that support. But, you know, truth be told, there is just a lot of shitty ones. But, dude, I, I watched one that was just fucking brilliant. Like, I loved it. The movie is called uh, Bad Guy Number 2. Oh, my God. Basically, and it's, it's not really horror, but it had a lot of gore. Like, it was a splat fest for sure. Um, basic premise is, like, this: he's a henchman inside, like, this mob, mob you know, organization. And what happens is when they fail to get the bat, you know, the, the, the hero, you know, he gets pissed and he kills his number two. And he looks at the main character. And he's like, "You, you're now the number two. And from there, it's it's just it's ridiculous. But I always get it's like it's fucking gory as hell. But dude, hilarious, just brilliant. So I don't know. You guys come across? I mean, I, I saw it on uh, not the Vimo. Is that it? V I M O. Doesn't matter. That's where I caught it at. Uh, I don't know if it's on YouTube or not, but uh, yeah, bad guy number two. If you come across it, check it out. Pretty damn good. Well, by now we all know. I believe I even mentioned it not too long ago. Um, Big Trouble in Little China remake. The fucking rock. Typically, and I will not deny this. Whenever I hear remake news, I am the first one to, you know, grab the Robin Williams belt here. And, Wrap it around like so, get it nice and tight, and then I put it over here on the on the closet door, and then I, I hang myself. That's, that's what I normally do. But when I found out they were remaking it, first I was like, "Ugh!" Like I love like, that's one of my favorite Carpenter movies. It really is. I mean, it's just is one of my childhood favorites. Like I remember it being a kid. And I would get, all, I used to have like a bunch of Ghostbuster toys and wrestlers and shit, and I'd get them all together. And as the movie's playing, I would reenact it with my toys. Like, that's how much I love the movie. Like I mean, I fucking love that movie as a kid, uh, and even now, like it still holds up to me. Like I, I just, I, I love it. Uh, so I was a little like, Ugh, but then I found out it was The Rock, and I'm like, you know, The Rock is one of those guys. He is so charismatic that literally, no matter what the guy does, like even if it's a shit movie, Doom. Uh, you know, he has enough charisma that his performance is usually good. Even when he's surrounded by shit, be cool. Um, but you usually like him. Like he, he can, you know, he, he draws you in. I'm sure San Andreas is horrible, but I don't doubt his performance at all. But what really clinched it for me? Because, like, once again, whenever it's like, you're like, you know, the rock's going to be, and I was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, he's Jack Burton. I'm in. But then when they found out that he's actually producing it, it made me even that much more excited because I'm like, you know, clearly he's a fan. Like, he already stated he's a big fan or whatever, but it's like, dude, this dude taking money out of his own pocket to invest in this project. Like, he's not just doing it for shits and gigs. Like, he's literally got passion for it. So, I, to me, that is just, that makes it even better. It really does. So, I don't know. Big Triple China, I'm curious how, what, you know, what they're going to do with it. Uh, and honestly, I hope they change up a lot. Like, I was at work and I was, um, well, you know, Every now and then we go on location to have a cameraman that, you know, runs the camera for me. And we were talking. And I was like, you know, they got the rock. What else would you do? Like, what would you do? Like, if you were in charge of making the Big Turn of Little China, you know, remake, what would you do differently? And I realized something that if, if I was actually doing it, I would change it completely. Like, I would honestly maybe just retain the basic, you know... Dude gets his truck jacked and him and his buddy are now facing the forces of evil. I, I think I and I know this is this is so cliche and I'm gonna get some hate for this, but like I'm a, I wanna know the backstory. Like how did David Lopan hook up with the three storms? How? I get like he, he you know he, he uh you know displeased the gods, they you know cursed him, and then what well, he just like went next door and was like, hey, you storms wanna hang out with me? No, like I wanna know, like I wanna see that formation. I would love to see that whole, you know, thing come together. Uh, but I think they ought to definitely keep the humor, but definitely amp up the action. Like, this is the one time I think I will allow some ridiculous Jason Statham action. Like, I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know. As a kid, I'm just like, it's so amped up. And I think the action scenes still work out very well. I mean, because you got to remember, it's fantasy. 
You know, they're fucking flying through the air, fucking sword fighting shit. Wing Chi, fucking awesome right there. So, I don't know, I, I, I'm looking forward to this remake, I'm not gonna lie, like, I am amped. Uh, and I really hope they did good, I really do, I hope they did justice. Um, think, you know, and, you know, let's do some Green Inferno news, this thing, they're a roller coaster ride this, has been held up for whatever, you know, because uh, the company switched over, or it was something, you know, like that, and anyway, it was just shelved. It was fucking shelved. Well, finally, Blumhouse, which I think that was, to me, was most logical, because I know, like, Lionsgate has completely just, they're just kind of turning their back on horror, which is sad to me. Like, I know that Hunger Games money is where it's at. I, I get that from a business standpoint. But it's like, did they forget about Paranormal Activity and Saul? Like, two of their biggest franchises that just dominated? But I guess you stack those franchises up against the Hunger Games. I should fucking forget about it. But, um... No, so I just know there's like less and less horror coming out there. But like Blumhouse, you know, it's constantly busting out shit, you know. And I was like, I don't know, it just seemed like logical to me. Like, why didn't they even attempt that first? But yeah, so Blumhouse is gonna be uh, helping get uh, Green Inferno out there. So, and I'm actually really excited for that. I really, yeah, I really hope it's not one of those cases where I, I remember when the interview. Remember the whole debacle at the beginning of the year of the interview, um, or the end of last year, I guess. Uh, I remember reading a lot of reviews saying, like, well, that was more hype than the movie's worth. Now, I, for one, thought the interview was great. Like, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was really funny or whatnot. So, to me, I was like, no, I, I, I'm, this is funny. Like, you know, I'm, you know, I hate I had to wait so long. Cause we were actually going to go out Christmas Day or whatever to go see it. And fucking North Koreans, they, they ruined it. I don't want to blame the entire country North Korea. Whoever the, the, the dictator is, Lil' Kim. Uh... Uh, anyways, it, yeah, I'm blaming them, but, uh, but no, so, I just remember reading an article, and it's been a while back ago, but someone said something like, you know, could it be too much hype, like, now that the Grand Inferno finally comes out, will we watch it and be like, eh, we, we waited all this time for that? Uh, I, I don't think so, I'm usually, usually, uh, big on Eli's work, so Eli Roth, you know, drops some shit, I'm usually hardcore, whether he's producing or directing, I'm usually there, so, uh, yeah, no, looking forward to it, really happy. That's probably coming out. Uh, the X-Files. I know like, I'm just dropping out little tidbits here and there, but uh, they got a new cast member this past week. Joe McHale. Fucking the suit. I have yet to see Community. So, like, I never really associate him with the Community. To me, he's always going to be the guy from the suit. Uh, so, yeah, no, uh, he, he's joined. And I guess he's going to be like this conservative uh, news reporter, I guess. And then he's going to be teaming up with Fox Mulder, which is going to be kind of interesting. So, uh, I like him because he just... He, he seems like he has the ability to play like that cocky asshole, and you know I just feel like he's gonna really pull that off. I loved him in Ted. Fucking Ted was great because he was just so smarmy and fucking sleazy. You know, it was great. Uh, so apparently, and I've honestly not been keeping up with this at all, but apparently uh, they're making uh, the final uh, Juon movie over in Japan, uh, or it's it's coming out soon. It's called the final, or sorry, Juon colon the final. Um, so the trailer. It really does seem like it's more of the same. Here's the weird thing, is I could not find a trailer that had subtitles at all. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that you know you get a little summary before you click the video, so like I get like the plot ish, and uh, yeah, I mean it, it just seems more of the same. People are investigating missing like her sister from the, or I guess the main girl from the last movie, which I didn't see it. Uh, I guess this girl's investigating her disappearance. It's not like, always the case. Like, they go to the house, they disappear or whatever. But, uh, yeah, just saw more creepiness there. And it looks good. Give it a check. Give it a check. Uh, MTV finally revealed the, uh, ghost face mask for, uh, the new Scream TV series. And, uh, explode. Here's the weird thing. I remember hearing reports of it's going to be a fleshy mask. Where the fuck did that even come from? Because this is not a fleshy mask at all. Um, here's the thing. Okay, let's just state right now, I think this TV show is going to be a fucking joke. I really do. Um, in fact, I don't even really want to watch the goddamn thing because I don't want to give them the ratings because I think they should be punished for doing something so fucking goddamn stupid. But, I will, I mean, I'm sure at some point it will be on uh, Netflix or, you know, whatever, and I'll, you know, check it out there. Uh, give them the views after the fact, you know. Um... So, I, you know, I, I am curious like anybody else, but in all honesty, I am rooting for this thing to fail. Like, usually, I, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I hope, I, I probably won't watch it, but I hope it does great. 
No, here I'm actually like, I hope it fucking failed. I'm like, we, we could have had Scream 5. And everybody's like, well, what can you do? I'm like, well, no, maybe not do part four, because part four was a fucking joke. Uh, they, they could do so much better, and they didn't. Uh, it's their fault. I blame Ken Williamson and Wes Craven for this Scream TV series. Uh, but anyways, so the fact that it's a TV show that I, I, I really can care less about, uh, if it would have been Scream 5 and it would have changed the mask, I'd probably be a little upset. Because I'm like, well, but why? The Ghostface is iconic. This is the film series. This is the Scream film series. However, it's a fucking TV show on MTV. Who gives a shit? Like, literally. And for what it is, it doesn't look that bad. I like it. Okay, It does have a different quality to it. Um... Because everybody's like, you can't change the mask. I'm like, you know what? Think of all the slashers that's been remade. Like, Myers, they changed the mask. Throughout the series, they changed the mean, You know, there's always a different, you know. Uh, we've all seen, like, the picture, you know, on the internet that has, like, you know, every movie and the different looks of it and everything. I mean, they alter it. They don't drastically change it, obviously. Uh, but, like, even, like, Jason, you know, I mean, look at Jason Goes to Hell. That thing was, like, literally this big around on his face. And then, you know, he gets blown pieces. Jason X. Fucking Jason X, boom. So, um, no, I mean, like I said, I'm not so much against the fact that they changed it. I think it looks kind of neat. I just think, that, you know, no matter how cool the mask was or they would get the original, it's still going to be a shit show, guys. It's going to be a shit fucking show. But I don't know, maybe I'm just hating. Maybe I'm just an old cranky man who just hates the fact that it's on MTV. Would I be as shitty if this was going to be on uh, A&E? Maybe not. Would I be just douchey if it was going to be on AMC? Probably not. NBC? You know, basically any station other than, you know, if it's HBO or Showtime, would I be as shitty? Probably not. But I'm sorry, MTV just, it's just known for shit. I'm sorry. And I'm not a teeny bopper fucking kid who's not, and it, it, do they still call it music television? Like, is that completely out the window now? But, I mean, seriously, I mean, there's nothing other but, like, bad reality TV. That's it. It's all it is anymore. And a show that's kind of like a uh, knockoff of uh, Posh.0. Is anybody actually watch this ridiculousness? Horrible. Fucking, it's not funny. And, I don't know, can't do it. Can't do it. I like my mean-spirited Daniel Tosh up there, you know, busting balls. But, uh, yeah, masks don't look that bad. I, I, I am curious to see how it does, uh, you know. I want to see it in action, I guess you, I guess you can say. But that, it depends on the killer. And I feel like with that mask, unless the guy's wearing a hood or the killer's wearing a hood, or maybe, like, the ghost face type thing, uh, you're going to be able to tell. I mean, I would think you'd be able to tell who it is. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, it seems like it's basically just a, the, the face mask, but it has, it's just straps. So, I mean, I'm sure you can match the hair to somebody. Like, oh, it's just, so unless they have long hair, they'll pull like it's a wig or something like that. Man, I'm going to say right now, if the killer has long hair, odds are it's a short-haired person and it's just a wig. But um, Final Destination, uh, the movie, is getting uh, turned into a novel. Apparently the guy, the screenwriter behind that, I forget his dude's name, Glenn Morgan maybe? Doesn't matter. Uh, I guess he did before, like he's been turning like his scripts into novels. So, yeah, if you're a fan of uh, Final Destination, you're a hardcore fan, you're a completist, where you're like, I gotta have everything that, you know, is Final Destination related, well, there you go. There's a book coming your way. Uh, read that they're gonna be doing a grudge reboot. I, I don't know how to feel about this. Like, once again, I love The Grudge. The sequels were a little, mm, But, uh, I'm like, do we really need a reboot? But I guess once you kind of go into that, uh, video or straight to video kind of area, then maybe it's time to refresh it. But at the same time, I'm like, well, do we even need it right now? Can we not just hold off? Can we just hold off a little bit? I don't know. Uh, but see, I haven't seen any of the Japanese ones except for, uh, the first two. Or maybe the first two. Whichever one that the... Because I know there's, like, I don't know. I think the the version that uh, I think the Juwan, you know, the original Juwan that you know the Grudge is based on. I think there's even some before it. Like that's like technically like three or four maybe in the series. If I could be wrong, I, you know, if I am, please you know correct me. But yeah, I, I think that's even like kind of just like thrown out there in the middle somewhere. So I don't know. I feel like you can just take any of the, you know, you got an entire list of movies of there's like nine of them right now. Just remake one of them. Fuck. We make one of them and make it to a sequel. Bring it back. Do they do like, you know, like, like uh, 
you know, they don't even have to like, you know, acknowledge part three. Do what they did with the uh, American Pie series. You know how like the American Pies went straight to video, but they brought back with American Reunion? So then there's kind of like two series. There's a theatrical series and a straight to video series. You can do the same thing with The Grudge. But, yeah. we're, in a, we're in a complete uh, remake society now, so, you know. Uh, and then finally, uh, got some news. Uh, they're doing, okay, they're going to be doing a stand. Uh, they're doing a movie. But first, they're going to do a miniseries on Showtime. I will agree that I think this is probably a pretty good way to go. As far as, I don't know, it's unique that they're doing a movie too, which kind of throws me off. I feel like The Stand would work. Maybe not, I mean, not a miniseries. I'd just do a fucking series. Keep going with it. Do you get to the end? I guess you call it a miniseries, but I'm sure you can stretch that shit out for three or four seasons. I think once you get to three or four seasons... You can no longer call it a miniseries. But, because I mean, once I've read the book, uh, I saw the, the movie. I think the book's clearly better than the movie. Uh, the book, I had a little issue, but eh, this, we ain't going to do into that. But, there's just so much of it. I mean, I never even read the uncut. Like, I mean, I guess King re released like another one later on. It was like the uncut. And I, from what I understand, it was just like so much fucking detail on like. Nobody character, like a character guy enter or in, and they'd be like, well, here's, we're going to do a whole page about this guy now, or whatever. So, I mean, but there is so much stuff going on that I'm like, yeah, you can't just try to condense it down to an uh, 80-minute movie. I want to see that. I want to see the 80-minute stand movie. I want to see someone do, like, an 86-minute, completely, like, condense it all down to 86 minutes. Let's see how ridiculous that could be. But, no, I, I, I'm down. i uh, do, do a miniseries. I, I kinda, it kind of begs the question, like, why don't they just do the entire thing as a miniseries? Because that's something kind of, what's weird thing about it is, like, I don't have Showtime. And I'm sure you can watch it, you know, when it gets, you know, on Netflix or, you know, DVD or whatever. But at the same time, I feel like they're going to probably do the thing where they're going to do the miniseries and lead up to the theatrical release, which means you'd have to basically go out and buy a subscription to Showtime. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm not contacting my cable provider and being like, oh, I need some Showtime because I gotta have some fucking stand, motherfucker. I feel like this will not see the initial thing. Like, I feel like people who want to watch it will wait for both of them to come out on DVD or, you know, on Netflix or whatever, you know, however you watch your movies. So I feel like, I don't know, is this gonna kind of work? Almost like they're trying to bully you into getting a Showtime subscription. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it just seems like if you're a casual fan or whatever, you're just out here. Let's say you have Showtime, but you don't really want to go to the theater. It's like, you're like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll wait until it on video. Dude, that's it. Or the other way, you're just like, ah, oh, shit. I'm going to watch this movie in theaters, but there's a whole miniseries before. And even though like, by now, I'll be able to have seen the original or maybe even read the book. And you're like, I won't be lost at the same time. You're like, I still want to see it all together. So I just feel like I'm not, it's, just, it's, it's a risky thing, but I'm, I am curious to see how it plays out. Uh, the stand is one of those things that's not sacred ground to me. Like, I can care if they remake it or not, because I'm like, eh. It's a TV miniseries, people. Yeah. Let's just remake it. Let's just remake it. Fuck it. Um, I, I own the stand. I was not really a huge fan of it. Like I said, and the book was, was definitely better, but there was definitely a lot with the book I just didn't care for either. Uh, I felt like it just kind of petered out there at the end, much like the movie. Uh, but yeah, but the guy that got to direct it, um... Uh, He's got a lot of shit coming out, and the one thing that kind of caught my eye, I guess he's also going to be remaking, um, or not remaking, but just doing the uh, Vampire Chronicles. Like, he's going to be tackling that. Like, I don't know if they're going to be recovering Interview the Vampire, because I've yet to read any of the uh, Anne Rice books. But, um, yeah, he's going to be hitting the Vampire Chronicles, which I'm not going to lie, I'm looking forward to it. I like the, I mean, I love Interview the Vampire. Uh, Queen of the Dam was all right. So, yeah, I'm definitely kind of curious to see how, you know, where we're going to go with this. So, well, guys. Uh, that is it as far as uh, news goes for the week. Uh, you guys want to discuss any of this shit? Hey, drop that comment down below. Uh, want to hit me up with anything you know, over on Facebook? You know, drop a conversation. If you're like, hey, I want to know more about this stand, you know, issue, yeah, we'll talk it out. Uh, so, guys, I'm a movie fan, and uh, 